Hi there. Thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video, I'm going to share with you my techniques and tips on how I drew this lacy top. Now I'll be slowing it down here and there, so be sure to watch it right through to the end so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Now this part one, part two and part three of this portrait, so be sure to have a look in the channel for that. So just a selection of pencils there you saw, um, just choosing some that are very similar to what the colour shades I'm, I'm seeing in the uh, reference image. But first of all, just laying down the basic shape by just using the Carbothello white and just basically putting more pressure on where it's lighter and just less pressure where it's um, maybe a half tone or a shadow. So just working through, working out which direction these patterns go. Um, it's a case of just letting go and feeling the shapes don't see it as a lacy top or else that will actually freeze you with fear you'll think god there's too much detail in that just see it as shapes and angles and then it will be easier to actually draw inset photo is viewed straight on as i see it but the actual drawing is in perspective because it's on the easel so the the actual proportions will be slightly different so you have to bear in mind and make allowances for that. Now here's a closer look at the pencils I've chosen that match similar to the shadows I'm seeing and what I'm doing to draw out I'm just using two pencils the white and the grey that I initially drew the outline of the portrait so um, yeah it's just a case of modelling it now just using the white and then using the grey, the darker grey, just to see where the shapes lie and structure them really. Now the tip of the white pencil, this is where the advantage of actually cutting the pencil with a knife is that you get sharp edges on the edges of the pastel at the point and then the point can be not so pointy so it can be like a dull point where here you need it not really sharp point you need it a click on dull point but the edges are quite sharp so you can use the side of the pencil to get the finer lines but then if you want to just one stroke you can use the top of it now the pencils i'm using here is a light ultramarine and the purpley red colors of the conti paris range now very very lightly i'm putting a coat over everything now i'm not putting any pressure at all i'm just letting it drag across the surface of the sandboard which is a pastel mat and it just takes enough off and what you're doing is making like a purpley color and that's giving a little bit of a base color for when you put the white over the top i've included here as well now yellow ochre so i'm mixing like a primary color base color that will mix with the white when i put on top as well so the white won't look flat it gives it more life to the white uh, so this is what i tend to do first just give a layer of base coat underneath it's hardly noticeable but it does make a difference when you start putting the white over the top of it now an important factor is that the white underneath there is the Carbothello white. Now if I had used the white from the Conti Paris it wouldn't take the pastel over the top of it, it would just smooth out so you won't keep the definition of the white underneath. So it's a play of different types of pencils that do different things. Now if you look at the pencil of the Caran d'Ache that really grabs the pastel mat so you can put quite a lot of glaze over that and it won't move what's underneath so you have to use pencils that don't move around too much now 
the contour Paris they move very easily very easily blended so I won't use them first on underneath if I'm glazing over the top so something to bear in mind when you're doing these details it, it is a fact of making sure that you use the right brand for the right thing um, if you're wanting to do what I'm doing here I mean obviously you can the idea is to create your own technique and using the same principles of the colors but how I achieve this is by using different brands that do different things so it's worth trying these different brands to see what they offer so uh, you, you've got more tools in the toolbox so to speak I mainly use my finger to blend but occasionally I use a cotton bud paper stumps or even a colour shaper which is like similar to a paintbrush but it's got silicon tip which is really good for very fine detail when you blend in that now the best way to sharpen pencils is to use a snap off blade and get your thumb behind it push through the wood and then once you've done that just shave the pastel to a point so the best thing to do is try and find a sharp part of the blade and then just push through and then chafer the pastel bit of the end but just turn in the pencil as you chafer If you find that you're getting value from this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free. Then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Now using the Karen Diash, uh, because they're quite rich in pigment, so it makes it more vivid, uh, more of a vivid white. So using that now on top of what I've already done. And then going through with the basic um, primary colours using lemon yellow now instead of yellow ochre which gives it that more vibrance to it. Now please bear in mind that the actual inset photo is viewed straight on as I see it but the actual drawing is in perspective because it's on the easel so the the actual proportions will be slightly different so you have to bear in mind and make allowances for that now the pastel sticks I use are Rembrandt sticks they are very very intense pigment in them so it really does stand out when you use the those colors on top so I use the edge of it so the best thing to do when you're using that is to a little dot to find where it is then move it along so here I'm using a grey which is very similar to what I want I'm putting that in first and then I go over the top of that with some of the primary colours whichever is needed like here it's just like making it more of an orangey colour so it's a case of keep adding the greys and whites and then putting over the top glazing the pigment um, with the primary colours and that basically um, the procedure using the blue and orange now to make a grey as they are complementary to each other they make amazing greys plus you've got that slight variation of sometimes it's a little bit more orange and sometimes a little bit more blue which you can actually see in the, in the reference image if you are enjoying this video why not give it a like and share it with your friends 
I'd really appreciate the support, it would mean a lot to me, help the channel to grow as well. Now to save time, I've jumped a little bit on the footage here. It's just exactly the same principle as what I've shown you earlier. It's just that I can't put all the footage in because it would make the video too long. I'm trying to slow it down for you so you can take a closer look, but it would be too long if I did that with every piece of footage. So uh, bear with me on that. Now I will be bringing out a Patreon page soon, which there will be videos four hours long, almost real time. So more than likely be putting this one on the uh, Patreon page as well, complete footage. So keep a lookout for that. I will be launching that soon. Um, so when it is launched, the actual link will be in the description below. You just have to be patient, it will come eventually, just keep working on it, glazing over the white, putting the white in, glazing over it, keep repeating that process and eventually the colours will come together. And just to mention as well that it's not just about drawing detail, so it's best not to have a tunnel vision of trying to draw everything perfectly as, as you see it. The best thing, what I've found, is to open up and connect to the whole of the portrait, even though you're actually just drawing the lace in this uh, instance, you're still connected to everything. So everything becomes part of each other. You see, there's more energy than you think just in clothes. You think, you know, it sounds a bit hippie, but it's, it does feel that there's, a, there's an energy about everything. So to connect to that is to open the heart, open the vision, see from the behind the eyes. Now that's a little tip, it sounds strange, but if you look from behind the eyes, it feels as though you get peripheral vision and you see everything. So then you'll be able to see the whole portrait and connect to everything while you're drawing any one part of it. really makes a difference putting these little highlights on as using these Rembrandt sticks as well. Now a little tip to actually use them is to try and find the edge is to do a little dot to start with and then move it along. So you just dab on it then move it. So you just try and find that little bit of an edge. That's it, dab it and then once you've got it you can move it a little bit wherever you want to go there. So you find where it is and then move it. Now the Rembrandt sticks are so vibrant and so rich in pigment that the pastel mat, it seems to really stick to the pastel mat. So that's perfect for what you want when you're glazing over the top because you don't want that white to move about. So for the really highlights of the white use the Rembrandt stick. Even if you don't want to buy any other colour, I suggest buying a white Rembrandt stick and also a white Caran d'Ache 
pencil if you can't afford the other pencils because that will make a massive difference for when you're putting the colours over the top of it. Right, so at this point now I'm, I'm going to have to speed this video up uh, just so it cuts down on the length of it because it's getting a bit long now. Now, um, like I said earlier, there will be a Patreon video of this real time, probably about three and a half, four hours long. So uh, if you wanted to check that out, uh, I'll put a link once it's launched, once it's not been long now before my Patreon page will be launched. So the link will be there once it's available. Just to mention again, this is part four. So there's part one, two, and three. If you want to follow this portrait from the very beginning, from freehand drawing the outline to doing the flesh colors, then the hair, and now the clothes. You'll find all the videos in my channel. So please take a look. Here's the portrait at the correct angle. Thank you for watching the video right through to the end. If you found value in it and you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Appreciate it. it would help the channel. Leave a comment and a message in the comments below. Uh, let me know what sort of videos you want me to produce. I've actually left a couple of links here for you to uh, click on. And to subscribe, click on the circle here. It's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Thank you so much. Take care and be well.